This is the Kodak Resonet 1V. It is a camera which was built by the German arm of Kodak. It is a very old camera, first made in 1959 through to 1963. So one of the earliest models of 35mm cameras was to come out. I'm going to break this camera down into its different components and see how we can go and shoot with this out in the field. Let's start with the top of the camera. We'll look at the lens itself. This is a f2.8 45mm lens. It comes with all the dials on the camera itself which can be a little bit confusing if you have never shot film before certainly i think for people in the 1950s it would have been a bit of a shock to the system i presume however let's break this down it's really quite simple and straightforward to use so to change the the aperture you've got this black dial thing on the left hand side here and you just rotate this to find the correct aperture setting now the aperture settings are actually on the other side of the camera you'd have to kind of look very carefully to find where you want to adjust your aperture to and once you've set that you can change your shutter speed as you can see here at the top can be done by changing or twisting this dial here like so. Now the other thing with this camera is you're going to have to manually adjust the distance between you and your subject. That can be a little bit tricky. Now this is all measured in feet, bear that in mind. One of the useful things at the top of this camera are these arrows. So you've got the center point here which I presume means perfect focus and then you've got a range where you can be you know just slightly off if need needs be one of the cool things is that once you rotate this dial it will actually uh, sink into the camera to confirm that that is the zone that will be in a little drop that you'll feel like so there'll be a little click and then you know that you are ready for that particular one so here between 15 feet to infinity if you're first time shooting with this camera i would suggest sticking to infinity and just go out and shoot some landscapes or some urban scapes rather than shooting portrait if you're really keen on shooting portraits then make sure that you can measure the distance accurately between you and your subject before you take the shots with it. The other thing to bear in mind about the front of the camera is the cable release function which is I believe here. You've also got a couple of other things here so you've got the selenium cell kind of focus thing here. Let's go to the top of the camera and you can see there are a number of dials here that will try to figure out what's going on. On the far left hand side here you can see it says color and you've got your sun exposure dial here. I don't think this does anything at all. This is just a nice little thing on the top of the camera. However, you will need to pull on this like so, so you can pop in the film into the camera. At the top, I believe you've got a cold shoe, not a hot shoe, pretty certain about that. Then you have got your shutter release here too. Once you cock your shutter, then you can just click on that and you can take your shot. There is a thread here, so you can pop in a cable release should you wish to do so. I believe there is one at the front here too you can use as well. The way that you kind of wind your film is unique because that is at the bottom of the camera you do so like that and then you can release from the top of the camera. The other thing to consider here is it will not automatically go into the next frame so you won't know what frame you're on unless you manually each time you take a shot you're adjusting for it which if it's your first time shooting or actually if you're well experienced with this because we're so used to knowing that the camera's moved on to the next shot you know it automatically does it for us we won't do that so be prepared to not know what frame you might be on potentially so always carry a few bare rolls with you. You've also got a selenium cell here so this helps you with zone focusing once you have put your shutter speed and your aperture dials incorrectly then once you go to press the shutter a dial thing comes up and it kind of tells you whether you are going to be okay shooting what you're shooting i think this is going to probably require a little few more test runs before you know for sure it's going to work or not but um that's you know progression i suppose at that time uh, it would have been quite uh, quite useful for a lay person who's just getting into photography to, to have that uh, available to them but to open up the film back you you can depress this button at the bottom of the camera it will pop in so it's quite a firm little button this one and then you can pop this into the camera make sure it's locked down and you're good to go pull the film across pop it in here don't think that changed this bit part of the technology across all cameras didn't really change very much between 1950 and 1980. Once you've got that all set up you can go ahead and close that and there will be quite a firm closure here you'll hear it kind of close like so and you know you're done. Once you finish your roll you can just press this button down here and that will release the film itself and you can just wind the film back up. I presume you would wind the film back up money from from here at the top. I think then you'll be fine and you're good to go. There is a tripod mount at the bottom on the left hand side of the camera here um, which will mean that tripod might be slightly on edge here so it'll be slightly to the right which actually is quite a cool thing to, to use and to shoot with so it will give you a different experience I suppose for that as well. Uh, one last thing I forgot to mention is there is a self timer on here that's found at the bottom 
of the lens like here you just pull on this thing all the way down and then when you press the shutter uh, release it will count for about 10 seconds it will take the shot as well so if you wanted a selfie possible to do that a word of caution if it's a very old camera it's not been used often you might find that that function does not fully work so there you have it this is the kodak retinet 1b i'm looking forward to shooting with this it's a pretty light camera to hold functions are not too tricky though the trickiest part of this will be making sure that you remember to move on to the next frame manually rather than relying on it to go automatically. I'm sure I'll capture some fun images with this. Let's see where we go with it. This particular camera was gifted to me and was picked up in a thrift store. Just be, bear in mind that if you're going to be getting one which is doesn't come with a case, there isn't anywhere where you can put a strap on anywhere really. So you'll have to you just carry it in your hand or alternatively try to find a solution for it. But the most of these will come with a leather case which looks like uh, so these are really quite handy you pop it in there it also looks after the camera very well these are specifically designed for these cameras and i do like these leather straps as well this, this is quite cool to, to have that is the retinet 1b i hope you've enjoyed this little video on this classic camera i'm looking forward to shooting with it see what i can capture with it get out there and start shooting some more film i'll see you on the next video